clearly in concert with the Secretary General of the United Nations that the killing of civilians and taking of hostages is a violation of international human rights law. So we must be accurate in all our contributions. And I shall say more later. Thank you. Thank you. The Honorable Minister Gubai. The Honorable Minister. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, House Chair. Good afternoon to you. Good afternoon, Honorable Members. Um, let me appreciate the input by Honorable Member that spoke about the infrastructure development in our country, which is supported, um, as Minister Zigala has been rolling out, part of the work that is in support of the economic reconstruction and recovery plan. That is work that will continue to support communities where we ensure that urban and rural communities are aligned and therefore are able to assist and support for the economic development in our areas. So we appreciate this by member of ANC who has raised it and comment that and assuring our communities that as we continue with the implementation of the ERR and the infrastructure development, more communities will be supported and will see this program arriving to them. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you. Uh, the last one, the Honorable Deputy Minister Muloy. Thank you, Honorable Chairperson. Uh, the point raised by Honorable Costi of the EFF earlier on, uh, Honorable Chair, uh, I, I must say that it is very sad and I don't think also it, it, it does, I don't think it warrants any response from 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 the Ministry uh, because the Honourable Member uh, does participate uh, uh, in the Portfolio Committee of Employment and Labour and her concerns, all her concerns and fears uh, 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 are always addressed uh, there and there's never been at any given moment where we uh, as the department uh, refuses to give information uh, uh, to the portfolio committee or any member for that matter uh, I, I don't think it does re uh, warrant any response of so an uh, honorable uh, uh, house chairperson and I thank you thank you honorable members that concludes ministerial responses Honorable members, the fourth item on the order paper is the statement by the Minister of International Relations and Cooperation on the ongoing Israel-Palestine conflict. I will now recognize the Honorable the Minister. Being a tofa, girl, attending this is full of tofa. The speaker is boom. I'm trying to understand why it is. Thank you very much, uh, Madam uh, Chairperson, once more. I should have agreed with the Honorable Pumza that the African National Congress is not deterred by these polls that are always meant to frighten the African National Congress. We will campaign hard and we will do well. Honorable members and honorable chairperson, thank you for allowing me the opportunity to present the statement. Today, I believe all of us joined the world in expressing horror at the war crimes being committed in Palestine through the targeting of civilians, civilian infrastructure, UN premises, and other vulnerable targets. These actions remind us of our experiences as black South Africans living under apartheid. This is one of the key reasons South Africans, like people in cities all over the world, have taken to the streets to express their anger and concern at what is taking place in Gaza and the West Bank. These demonstrations illustrate the frustration felt the world over that people are being attacked and are losing their lives with little or no action to stop these atrocities. The facts that have been released detailing the devastation of the current conflict are horrendous. 
Over a thousand Palestinians are dead, thousands injured, public facilities destroyed, and cruel and wanton bombardment is ongoing. Therefore, as South Africa, we remain steadfast in calling for an immediate comprehensive ceasefire. The full as well as complete opening of all humanitarian corridors to ensure much needed aid and basic services reach those in need. Madam Chairperson, the actions that we are witnessing daily by Israel are a violation of international law, including the United Nations Charter, the Geneva Convention and all its protocols. In its attacks on and kidnapping of innocent civilians, Hamas has also violated international law. While we express horror at the violence, it is critical that we acknowledge that the illegal occupation of Palestine by Israel for several decades has led to bitter hatred and increased violence, and that this violence is not the first violence the people of Palestine have experienced. It has been going on for decades and decades and decades, and nothing we can say will obliterate that fact. However, Chairperson, the murder of children, of women, and the aged by Israel is an act that should have resulted in the International Criminal Court issuing an immediate arrest warrant for key decision makers, including Mr. Netanyahu, who is responsible for violations of international criminal law. <laughs> Madam Chairperson and Honorable Members, it's important to stress that the Israeli-Palestinian conflict can only be solved through the establishment of two states, Palestine and Israel, living side by side in peace. The Palestinian state should be created along the lines of the 1967 border with East Jerusalem as its capital and in line with standing multiple UN resolutions. For this two-state solution to materialize, a peace process initiated by the United Nations needs to commence urgently. We are aware that increasing settlements and illegal occupation have been used to make the creation of a Palestinian state almost impossible. The world must reject the Bantustan-type balkanization that has increased bitterness and hatred. We must reinforce all efforts aimed at creating two states. Madam Chair and Honorable Members, the collective punishment that Israel is exacting on all Palestinian people is an affront that has gone on for too long. The world has expressed horror at these affronts, but has not acted effectively to save Palestinian lives. Sadly, even here in our own country, there are many who choose to turn a blind eye to these atrocities. On 27 October this year, our country was among more than two thirds of the member states of the United Nations that called for an immediate ceasefire in the General Assembly. This decision of the General Assembly has been ignored. It is impossible for us to continue to proclaim the importance of international law and the importance of the UN Charter for some situations and not for others, as if the rule of law only applies to a select few. For international law to be credible, it should be uniformly applied and not be selective. Let us be clear. Minister, talk a little bit about logistical issues. Um, Let us be clear. Uh, excuse me, honor, honorable, honorable members, minister. Israel is an occupying power uh, confirmed by minister. the International Court of... On our website, everybody needs a visa. There are no... Honorable... Honorable Minister, sorry about that. Uh, IT, could you please remove... Uh, this is the third oh, time sorry. this Honorable Member has done this. Honorable... 
Honorable Papa. Just wanted to raise an issue which the previous presiding officer raised of members who, when we are in the sitting, they are busy with other things. I think that issue is very serious and it's not, uh, it's not uh, a matter which uh, is, you can laugh about as uh, Dr. Ndoz is trying to do. It's a serious matter. And Thank it affects much, all noted. the political parties, by the way. Thank you, Honourable Member. It's noted. You may proceed, Honourable Minister. Chairperson, it's important that we should be clear on, my, on facts. Israel is an occupying power. This was confirmed by the International Court of Justice as well as the United Nations. As an occupying power, Israel can use tools applicable to the rule of law including policing powers to deal with criminal actions in the area it occupies. An occupying state cannot exercise control over territory it occupies and simultaneously attack that territory on the claim that it is foreign and poses an exogenous national security threat. The notion of Israel's right to defend itself through military means has been used erroneously in international law by many and deliberately by others to justify the unlawful use of force by Israel on the people of Palestine in Gaza and the West Bank. The crime of genocide sadly looms large in the current situation in Gaza. We recall that in 1994, a genocide occurred on the African continent with much of the whole world watching as innocent people were massacred. During the Second World War, innocent people were massacred and placed under siege. In response, at the end of the war, an international system was created, including the establishment of the United Nations. Human rights instruments and judicial mechanisms were also established so that history would not repeat such cruelty. However, the selective application of these international instruments and the utilization of some of the mechanisms for attaining narrow interests has resulted in calling to question the effectiveness of the system. It is a system that has failed the people of Gaza as it did in 1994 for the people of Rwanda and later of Bosnia. What is needed now more than ever before is reform of the system of global governance so that it is fair, equitable, and has the capacity to respond to the needs of all persons in situations of threat and harm. The system that is needed should not just be a tool for the most powerful countries of the world, but one that provides protection for the most vulnerable. The inadequacy of the UN Security Council, which we've pointed to many times, a council that has a mandate derived from the UN Charter for the maintenance of international peace and security has become a glaring fault in the international system. The Security Council, due to aggravated politicization, has not at the very least been able to call for a humanitarian ceasefire to allow for much needed humanitarian supplies to go to those that need it most. This one once again illustrates the urgent need for the reform of this body. Chairperson, many of us feel helpless looking at the images of the suffering children and other innocent civilians as they are battered. As South Africans, we need to raise our voices and call for the following concrete actions to end the suffering. One, an immediate comprehensive ceasefire. Two, the opening of humanitarian corridors so that aid and other basic services reach all in need. Three, all parties to exercise restraint and to desist from fueling this patently unjust war and human suffering, including by seizing the supplying of weapons to the various parties. Four, the release of all civilian hostages. Five, in light of statements on the use of nuclear power, the establishment of a Middle East nuclear weapons free zone, just as we have created on our continent, Africa. 
Six, the resumption of a comprehensive dialogue led and owned by Palestinians and Israelis themselves and facilitated by the United Nations. And seven, the deployment of a UN rapid deployment force in Palestine mandated to monitor the implementation of a ceasefire, cessation of hostilities, and most importantly, to protect civilians. Chairperson, honorable members, our common humanity dictates that all human lives matter and the time for the international community to stand together and act is now. We who enjoy the freedom from apartheid can never, ever be the ones who agree to an apartheid form of oppression. And it is not merely ourselves who are saying this, it is international organizations that have done research on torture, imprisonment, killing, and who previously, when reporting on other matters, are regarded as credible, but when it comes to Israel, their reports are not accepted. This cannot be tolerated. This brutality should not be accepted. We must call for a ceasefire now as honorable members of the House of South Africa. I thank you, Honorable Chair. Thank you very much, Honorable Minister. The Honorable Powell. Thank you. Chairperson, the Democratic Alliance stands in solidarity with both Palestinians and Israelis who seek a two-state solution. We embrace rationality based on peaceful coexistence for a secure Israel and a free Palestine. We seek the triumph of rational forces committed to peaceful coexistence on both sides of this terrible conflict. That is why we stand united in our condemnation of the brutality unleashed on the Israeli people by Hamas on the 7th of October. This massacre conjured some of the darkest memories of centuries of persecution against the Jewish people. We condemn in the strongest terms the dehumanization of any person on the basis of their faith, their race, their lineage, or their place of birth. But Hamas's actions on the 7th of October also betrayed the people of Gaza, unleashing a calamity that is unprecedented in living memory upon more than two million Palestinians. What is equally true is that the people of Palestine are not defined by Hamas. And the people of Palestine cannot and must not be subjected to collective punishment. That is why the DA condemns, in the strongest terms, Israeli radicals like Minister Eliyahu, who over the weekend threatened the use of nuclear weapons against the people of Palestine. Dangerous statements such as these are transparent dog whistles to escalation, designed to perpetuate an already fractious climate of fear and terror, the disproportionate burden of which is borne by innocent civilians. The DA remains concerned by the escalation of violence and the rising death toll in both Gaza and on the West Bank. The intense human suffering and the scale of civilian casualties must be brought to urgent conclusion. We again call on Israel to ensure that defensive action is indeed carried out within the confines of international law. Both the indiscriminate killing of civilians through the use of carpet bombing and the vile use of civilians as human shields by terrorists must be condemned as acts of immorality committed by men who betray the foundational principles of the very faiths they claim to represent. The DA further calls for the creation of safe zones and for a humanitarian pause in the fighting to ensure the flow of increased aid into Gaza and to allow more civilians to access guaranteed safety. Importantly, as the fighting rages, we call on all peace-loving South Africans to recognize the deeper conflict playing out on both sides of this terrible war.
This is not a war between the descendants of Ishmael and Isaac, but rather a war between radicalism, which seeks the annihilation of the other side, and rationality, which recognizes the inherent rights of both the Israelis and the Palestinians to statehood, sovereignty, and security. Fundamentalists on both sides of this conflict who have been stewing in a combustible combination of grievances for generations and who feed off of one another in order to ramp up and rationalize their own extremism must be rebuked by all of us. For peace to be possible, rationality rather than radicalism must win the day. Honourable members, history will remember the significance of this moment and how we either used our voices to fuel hatred and division or advocate for lasting peace. This crisis can only be brought to an end by those driven by peace building, reconciliation and possibility. The question that all of us in this house must today ask ourselves is how we can each be honest brokers of peace. Because despite the lessons imparted by the giants of our democracy, some amongst us today have already descended into the fog of war and are now entirely blinded by it. South Africa's history should serve as a beacon of hope, reminding the world that peace and reconciliation are possible even in the darkest of times. Instead, the governing ANC has altogether dismantled our nation's once respected international standing and exposed their inherent moral bankruptcy. The Honourable Minister Pandor cannot stand at this podium and position the ANC government as an honest advocate for peace. The truth is that the ANC seems to have no genuine interest in building peace in the Middle East. They are only interested in using this tragedy for their own political gain, hoping that they can sow division and distract the South African people from their dismal failure as our government. The Minister's recent telephone call to the leader of Hamas squandered any last remaining vestige of credibility her department had left. The Honourable the Honourable Minister's recent visit to Iran to meet President Raisi, who is actively funding Hamas and whose government has ordered the execution of more than 1,275 of their own citizens since August 2021, has exposed the ANC for the hypocrites that they are. As the prospect of electoral defeat looms ever closer, the ANC stands exposed before the world as the desperate political opportunists that they have now become. But South Africa is more than her government, and we, her people, can still raise our voices in support of fundamental moral propositions, that Israel has a right to exist and to protect her people, that the Palestinian people have a right to live in peace, free from occupation and the threat of unyielding retaliation for crimes perpetrated by terrorists and that through a two-state solution, both Israel and Palestine can enjoy freedom and prosperity. With these aspirations as our guiding light, the international community must stand together to support restoring the security of Israel and ensuring the return of hostages, the urgent provision of adequate humanitarian aid to Gaza, the establishment of safe zones for displaced civilians, and an urgent humanitarian pause in the fighting to ensure the free flow of aid and to allow more civilians to reach these safe zones. World leaders need to urgently come together and start building the conditions for peace. Now is the time for leaders from across South Africa to unite on the basis of our shared constitutional values and call for peace. Drawing on the lessons of our nation's negotiated settlement in 1994 that averted war and built peace, we encourage all South African civil, religious and political leaders to come together and to offer our mutual assistance in finding resolution to this abhorrent crisis and mapping a pathway to lasting peace in the region. Peace is possible, but we must have the moral fortitude to stand with those who pursue it and to condemn all of those who seek to destroy it. I thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable Member. A complete distortion of what is happening in Gaza. The Honorable Tandlose. Thank you, uh, House Chairperson. We're here to stand with Palestine. We're here to take sides in favor of the oppressed. Condemn Israel and declare that it is a murderous apartheid regime engaged in systematic extermination of Palestinians. It is not a single event. They are engaged in a system permanently subjecting Palestinians to racial humiliation.
We do this because we understand that our freedom here was attained through massive international solidarity by peoples of the world, 90% of which had never set foot here. It is in this context that we are responding to the suffering of a people who live thousands of kilometers from South Africa. We know that we are international citizens. As we stand here, Israel has massacred over 10,000 Palestinians in Gaza under their military assault, killing children, bombing churches, hospitals, schools. Many have been painting Palestinians who are responding over half a century to Israeli systematic oppression as terrorists. Now, the label of terrorists, we know it very well, because it is a label that was put to Mandela it is a label that was given to Subukwe. It is a label that was given to the, to the liberation movement. The Israeli state was formed in 48 with the full support of Western powers through forced removals and ethnic cleansing of Palestinians. Fact. It was inaugurated as a Jewish only state where Palestinians who have the right to the land are not returned or are not allowed to return. Yet any Jewish person who was not born there, who has never been there, can go and attain citizenship with immediate effect. They control movements of people through thousands of military checkpoints. In fact, they have built a wall and a fence around Gaza controlling entry and exit of people and goods. There are separate roads for Palestinians and Jewish people around many Jewish settlements in Palestine. Palestinians do not enjoy freedom to demonstrate against their oppressor. They are told demonstrations, they, are, they get arrested, they even get killed. Thousands of Palestinians are arrested without trial, even charged in Israeli military courts. The world knows this. And when Palestinians respond, they are called terrorists. The Israeli state is fundamentally a racist state. Nobody must be allowed to coexist with a fundamentally racist state. We can't, we can't be asked in the interest of the values of our constitution to recognize a racist state whose establishment is for a Jewish only people at the expense of Palestinians. Why would you do that? Those are the facts. This is not a religious war, Murud. It's an evil war. It's not a holy war. There is no people who have a God's right to be superior to anyone. The Israelis don't represent the Jewish communities of the world. They represent Zionism and racism. It must be said here, whoever supports them supports racism. So what is South Africa doing in a relationship with a racist regime? If they are engaged in a genocidal exercise, Minister Naledi Pando, why are you recalling people for consultation? Because you've already declared that there is a genocide. Why are we friends with people who are violating the values of our constitution? Why are we friends with people who are massacring children in hospitals, in schools? What must happen? What must be said before the whole world isolates Israel? Israelis, Palestinians for the longest time never asked you for a single bullet, which they should because they've got the right to fight even with military arms against the racist regime. They've asked you for a simple thing. Isolate Israel the way the world isolated apartheid. When are you doing that? Let's sever ties because a relationship with Israel as South African offends our constitutional values. It offends any rational thinking about coexistence. It offends peace. We should recall the ambassadors, everybody. We should fire the ambassador of Israel. We can't be friends with Israel until they establish a society in compliance with international law on one hand and they recognize the right of Palestinians to coexist. I wish, I wish for once in our lives we can be on the right side of history. Honorable Let's sever Dose. all ties with the racist. Thank you very much. Thank you. A good doctor. The Honorable Fengwa.
Thank you very much, House Chairperson. Honorable Minister, I think of the seven action steps that you have enumerated in your statement, none of them can be faulted. The Ngata Freedom Party has always advocated for the path of nonviolence and negotiation and remain steadfast in our belief that a two-state solution for Israel and Palestine could provide the peace, justice, and stability that the Middle East so desperately needs. Exactly a month ago, on October 7, the fragile peace in the Middle East was tested and shattered when a series of Hamas attacks were carried out against Israel, with civilians bearing the brutal brunt of this violence. As the Israel and Palestine conflict continues to inflict suffering on innocent civilians and disrupt regional harmony, the IFP strongly urges all parties involved to lay down their arms and engage in meaningful dialogue to find a lasting solution to this protracted crisis. We call on Israel to exercise restraint and commit to a ceasefire and a peace process. We call on Hamas to join the peace process and come to the negotiation table in finding an amicable solution to this conflict. Now, after weeks of violence, many more innocent lives have been lost. These are not faceless statistics, but real people with hopes and aspirations, families and communities. It is our moral duty, not only as South Africans, but as a global community, to hear their cries and respond to their plight. Further, the IF, as the IFP, we want to caution the South African government that isolationism in a time of war is not a solution. Recalling or dismissing ambassadors merely amounts to regressive diplomacy, which in turn complicates the negotiations. If South Africa is truly to be a trusted mediator, committed to reaching a negotiated peace, all parties to the conflict must be treated in the same way. As the IFP, we echo the call of the United Nations for both sides to declare an immediate ceasefire and to return to the negotiating table. The nations of the world must stand together to condemn all violence against civilians, regardless of their circumstances. The international community, including the United Nations, must facilitate and support these negotiations, ensuring that they are fair, inclusive, and conducted in good faith. Chairperson, we want to reiterate that we remain committed to a two-state solution whereby both nations can peacefully coexist. Achieving this solution will require both sides to make concessions for the greater good. It is therefore incumbent on all of us to be part of the solution and not to contribute to the problem. Honorable Chairperson, security is a fundamental concern quite clearly for both Israelis and Palestinians. Therefore, by advocating for an immediate cessation of hostilities, condemning the violence, and pushing strongly for a two-state solution, we are also advocating for the safety and security of those living in the region. Further, we want to reiterate the call and need to ensure that humanitarian aid reaches the people who so direly need them during this difficult time. But at the forefront of our thinking, House Chairperson, is a clarion call for peace and negotiation. I thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable Tangwa. The Honorable Dr. Melda. Thank you, Honorable. Can we just get. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Honorable Chairperson. Today is the 7th of November. It was exactly a month ago, on the 7th of October, when a group of Hamas fighters, some call them terrorists, some will call them freedom fighters, attacked civilians in the southern part of Israel. And the worst atrocities thinkable were perpetrated by this group of people. 1,400 Israeli citizens, civilians murdered, maimed, raped, children beheaded, put in ovens and set alight. That happened. That happened. The ANC, the ANC, how did the ANC respond? The ANC, the whole cabinet, came out with their scarves and they said, we support and we stand with Palestine. They said they support and stand with Palestine with the flags and everything in your hands. Not one word, not one word of condemnation of Hamas and these atrocities. Not one word. Only after... After Ahmed Abbas, 
denounced Hamas. After that, a weak sentence came. Oh, the, the record is there and the minister knows that. A weak record came from the ANC. The minister today was more than normally a responsible minister with good proposals, creating an impression that the ANC is sincere in this whole process. No, you're not. While the Honorable Dr. Ndlozi was speaking and making an attack on Israel with all those statements, this side of the House, the ANC, were all nodding in support. All of you, look at that. Yes, 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 yes. There you go. There you go. That is the real ANC. That is the real ANC. Not the, not the position to, to, taken by the minister today. What was the relationship in Gaza? What was the relationship between Gaza and Israel before the 7th of October? What was the relationship? Every day, every day, 20,000 people from Gaza went into Israel to voluntary work. There was a good relationship. Every day, hundreds of trucks, every day, hundreds of trucks went into Gaza to take goods and to bring exports from Gaza back. That was the relationship. But then Hamas decided to destroy all of that. Now, the minister, you have now, you have now recalled our ambassadorial staff in Israel. And you've said it's for consultation purposes. It's not for consultation. No, you can take the telephone and consult. You can take a Zoom call and consult. You've drew, drew those people. Why? To send a message to Israel. And to send a message to your supporters as well. But you know what? Your message reached further. Today, two senators in the U.S., Senator Chris Coons and Senator Jim Rich, reacted to that state of yours, the fact that you are with Russia, the fact that you are with Hamas, the fact with, that you are with um, uh, Iran, you went there. Today they've reacted by saying the Ahua process, they will have to take a course of corrective action in Congress. That's the reality. That's, you say it's okay. You say it's okay. Now, Honorable Minister, unfortunately, I don't have the time to to discuss all these things with you. I've got four minutes. But let me conclude. I have reason to believe that you've got good contacts with Hamas and you've got good contacts with Iran. Oh, yes, you do. Now, let me tell order, you. Order, let me tell you, members. The conflict can allow stop. Allow the speaker to conclude. The conflict can stop today. Today. Three conditions. Three of them. The missiles fired from Gaza must stop. The, the missiles must stop. Secondly, all hostages must be released immediately. Thirdly, the perpetrators of these atrocities by Hamas must be banished. I hope the minister listened. I hope you will convey this. I'm telling you, there are three. You don't listen to me. You don't listen to me. You don't have to listen to me. The ANC is on the wrong side of history, and that's why you will be rejected. Thank you very much, Honorable Dr. Melda. Goodbye to the ANC. Order, order, honorable members. Order, honorable members. The honorable Fring. Honorable House Chairperson, the ACGP asserts that South Africa has a moral oblig obligation to support a negotiated solution to the Israeli Palestinian conflict and to distance itself from a radicalized position on Israel, a position which undermines any hope of a negotiated process and a peaceful outcome. The ACDP believes that the recalling of South Africa's diplomats in Israel will not serve any benefit to the Palestinian people. It simply removes South Africa's ability and authority to play a mediated role in any future peace negotiations between Israel and the Palestinians. By recalling our diplomats, we have lost that role. This was affirmed by conflict resolution expert, Dr. Kingsley Makubela, who said the move was incorrect as the absence of a South African diplomatic mission in Tel Aviv will not change the situation and will not allow South Africa an understanding, a better understanding of what's happening here. Cabinet's decision to recall our Israeli diplomats 
is based on the assertion that the Israeli government failed to respect international law. The ACDP notes and appreciates the breaking of the silence in condemning and flouting international law by Hamas when they raped women, murdered and burnt children and whole families and kidnapped over 200 hostages, including minister, two South African women. And there was silence from South African government on that. Likewise, we cannot remain silent at the slaughter of thousands of ethnic Africans at the hands of the Arab Janjaweed calling dark-skinned Africans unbayi slaves. We cannot be silent. Israel's history with its land goes back some 4,100 years and some 3,400 years ago Israel was established as a nation. Fact, Christianity was established 2,000 years ago and Islam about 1,400 years ago. It is a fact that Israel withdrew from Gaza in 2005 and is not an occupier. Hamas is. The current con conflict can be found in the opening paragraph of Hamas's covenant. Israel will exist and continue to exist until Islam will obliterate it just as it obliterated others. Article 7 of Hamas says the day of judgment would not come until Muslims fight and kill Jews. This is not a call for peace, but a call for genocide. More chilling are Hamas's chants. First the people of the Saturday Jews and then the people of the Sunday Christians. The ACDP takes no pleasure in the death of the innocents and calls on both sides of this war to come together Thank you, the international Honourable community Member. to bring all to the peace the time of is up. the table of peace. I thank you. The Honourable Kwankwa. Order, Honourable Members. Thank you, very, thank you very much, House Chair. The United Democratic Movement supports the Minister's call for an immediate cessation of host, all hostilities between Israel and Palestine in order to create an environment that is conducive for dialogue to occur. The fact is the ongoing Israel-Palestine conflict which began in the mid 20th century is one of the world's longest continuing conflict and the international community must bear part of the blame and responsibility for allowing this con conflict to continue for as long as it has and allowing and accepting the longest occupation in modern history. The conflict is characterized, as we know now and we have seen, by war crimes, from the intentional attacks on innocent women and children, innocent civilians, collective punishment of innocent people for the actions of Hamas. The racist world, unfortunately, which made the loudest noise during when in the war against uh, between Russia and Ukraine, has conveniently and decided to turn a blind eye to the merciless matter of women and children who are innocent simply because they are different color. As democratic countries around the world, we have failed the brutalized civilians in, Ghana, in Gaza. People are, are denied the most basic needs such as food, water, and health services, while you so-called Democrats and human rights activists decide to convenient turn a blind eye to what we consider to be a serious human rights violation of human rights. In the face of the murder of Palestinians, in fact, the Palestinian, Palestinians will, in the end, borrowing the words of Martin Luther King Jr. when he said, will not remember the words of their enemies, but the silence of their friends. Throughout history, women and children have consistently borne the brunt of the consequences of war, suffering long-term hardships. Israel's war in Gaza exemplifies this tragic re reality as it continues to take a heavy toll on the lives of women and children with each passing day. We have said, while this occurs, the, U the UN Security Council continues to deter and to bicker about insignificant issues while people are losing lives. We are calling not only on the South African government, but would like to make a clarion call to continental leaders to do exactly what they did in the conflict between Russia and Ukraine maybe try to initiate its own independent mediation effort because the United States is discredited 
as a mediator. They can't be arming Israel and giving aid to Israel and then pretend and parade on TV as if they are trying to actually call for an immediate ceasefire, which is unadulterated claptrap. They think we're stupid. They are saying fight on the one hand and on the other they are parading in front of cameras, posturing for the public, saying we're negotiating for a ceasefire and whatever they want to call it. In actual fact, they are supporting war because they are benefiting in their industry to war. Thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable Member. The Honorable Zongola. ATM. Um, thank you. Thank you, Chair. This debate is of paramount importance to our nation's values, its commitment to justice, its legacy as a beacon of hope for those oppressed and seeking freedom. First and foremost, the ATM condemns the continuous violation of human rights in the Israeli-Palestine conflict. It is a humanitarian crisis that demands our collective outrage and immediate attention. We cannot remain silent whilst innocent civilians including the most vulnerable women and children, suffer the devastating consequences of this protracted conflict. We as a nation must uphold the principles of justice, human dignity, self-determination for all peoples, including Palestinian people. We express our full support for the South African government decision to recall all South African diplomats from Israel. This is a crucial step that signifies our nation's commitment to the principles of justice and human rights. We, st we must stand in solidarity with the Pal Palestinian people, just as the world once stood with us during our own struggle against apartheid. Our history serves as a stark reminder of the value of the global support in the face of oppression and injustice. Furthermore, we strongly condemn the actions of the Israel's ambassadors to South Africa. Diplomacy should be conducted in a manner that is consistent with international law and, and principles of mutual respect. When such actions undermine these principles, they demand our swift and resolute response. In our fight against apartheid, we learned the profound significance of international solidarity and support. We cannot remain silent when faced with a gross violation of human rights. The parallels between our own painful history and the Israel-Palestine conflict are undeniable. That is why, as the ATM, in solidarity with the Palestinian people, calls for the Israel embassy, em, embassy in South Africa to be shut down, and the ambassador declared a personal grata as a powerful symbol of our protest against apartheid and genocide. We must take all necessary precautions to ensure that South Africa is not complicit in these grave human rights violations. Our nation's dedication to human rights should be unwavering, and we must strive to set an example for the world by defending these fundamental principles. In conclusion, we align ourselves with the Minister of International Relations, and we call for unwavering commitment to justice peace and the protection of human rights in the Israel-Palestine conflict. Let us be a voice of the voiceless and work diligently to, towards a future where both Israelis and Palestinians can coexist in peace and security. I thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable Member. The Honorable Heron. Thank you, House Chair. Our share in a dynamic and complex world of shifting geopolitical power, South Africa's foreign policy must be guided by the same constitutional values and principles that guide policy at home. On that basis, we cannot look the other way when Russia invades a neighboring for foreign a sovereign state, nor when Israel perpetrates genocide against the people of Palestine. We can't maintain friendly relations with a state that has publicly committed itself to perpetrating unprecedented violence against innocent people to, to buttress unjust policies that trigger me memories of our own experiences under apartheid. A state that is holding millions of people collectively responsible for Hamas' 7th of October attack, despite the overwhelming majority of them having nothing to do with Hamas. We can't look the other way when images of dead and wounded Palestinian children dominate our screens and consciousness. As such, we regard the further review of diplomatic relations with Israel as necessary and appropriate and, and, and as a matter of principle. 
We further call on Doko to, take up, to, to, to turn up the heat at the United Nations for a resolution calling for ceasefire. It's the right thing to do. This doesn't mean we're anti-Semitic, pro-Hamas, or don't believe that the people of Israel have the same right as the people of any other nation to live in safety. To be clear, for as long as Israel illegally occupies Palestinian land, encourages its farmers to grab more land, and regards Palestinians as untrustworthy and deserving of contempt, it breathes fresh ox oxygen on a smoldering fire. It provides fresh daily provocation for people who are willing to do what Hamas did four Saturdays ago. Palestinians have a generational duty to struggle for their freedom from occupation and contempt. Their actions, however, must comply with acceptable international practices with respect to the protection of civilian lives. Neither the extremist leaders in Palestine and, and Israel, nor their backers across the region and the Atlantic, own solutions to the crisis. There aren't any military solutions. Real solutions belong to ordinary citizens and civil society. The people of Israel and Palestine must stand up against violence and hate and elect leaders willing to engage in meaningful dialogue to develop an environment in which Jews and Muslims can live in peace, be it in two separate states or a single human community. In the meantime, the only short-term solution is an immediate and unconditional ceasefire. Thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable Member. The Honorable Sheikh Imam. Thank you, Honorable House Chairperson. Let me start off by saying my colleagues here, either they have gone deaf or they have gone blind. I hear some of them saying we must go and negotiate. Isn't that what was happening for all these years and Israel has not complied with one single agreement? So now you still say you must go negotiate. And what you're asking them to go and negotiate? Or would they, you want to negotiate with the Palestinians on something that rightfully belongs to the Palestinians? And why are you forgetting that Israel never existed? The Palestinian Jews, Christians, and Muslims have lived there peacefully side by side for thousands of years. It's Zionism that's only a hundred some odd years old. That is what the problem is. And I'm not surprised by you, Freedom Front. I cannot be surprised because you and the Zionist state of Israel are no different. That is exactly what you did to ordinary South Africans during the days of apartheid. So, let when you talk about wanting to have a settlement and agreement now i see you raising a question about there was peace in the middle in the, particularly in gaza where do you get your facts from every other day palestinians have been massacred in in palestine and you don't see that suddenly you see 200 hostages and suddenly you are rising your temperatures have gone very high to the da let me turn on and say to you stop living a lie you will go back and search your conscience. What is the truth about Palestine? Go and do that. You get funding from the Zionist state. That's why you have to come here and sing their praises. That is exactly what you are doing. To. Your survival depends on that. That is the problem to, to you. To the IFP, I want to say, what dialogue can you talk about? What about the agreements that were entered into? Tell me so many. They have not complied, Israel has not complied with one single agreement. You heard the statement by the minister in Israel, what did he say? Go and throw an atomic bomb there, a nuclear bomb. That is what he says. Now are you telling me is that conducive environment for negotiation? No. We are saying there's only one way. Expel the Israeli ambassador once and for all and shut the embassy in South Africa. Shut the, shut the embassy, the liaison office in Israel. Shut it down. It's the only way they're going to learn. <clears throat> you said that during apartheid, but we got it. <laughs> <laughs> Chairperson, Minister, visa conditions must be stringent for Israelis wanting to visit South Africa. On the issue of dual citizenship, we need to have a re-look at it. Because you cannot be using dual citizenship to go and participate in that military and commit atrocities. And remember, it's a serious threat to South Africa as well. The monies that are coming into this country to fund these Zionist political parties here, we need to deal with that as well. And until you stop the funding that's coming, these people, remember, 
They are led by the United States, the big boss. This is what Thank it you is very all much. about. Your time is up. So we need to take this stringent action and we need to take it now. But lastly, I want to say, if you are silent, you are Thank supporting you, genocide. Say, the time is Silence up. means supporting genocide. And to the ACTP, say, the stop time using is religion. Up. Religion won't work anymore. Honorable Sheikh, the time is up. Order, order, honorable members. Uh, as the tempers are flying, please let's consider time. The honorable chapter. Thank you, <clears throat> honorable sir. When the South African government has created its Israel, its Israel embassy, we hopefully we. We were hopeful that the Israel embassy in South Africa will be permanently closed. We note that the onslaught against the innocent civilians of Palestine has been justified by the South African Jewish of deputies. We condemn this justification with the contempt it deserves. We also have not shielded from the utterances sponsored by the then CRL Commissioner, Mr. Gompanas Kaluva, who had argued that the downgrading of the Israel embassy was said to unfairly impact on the ability of South African Jews to practice and identify with their religion and cultural heritage. This line of reasoning was short-sighted as one could not elevate some few cultural rights over human rights. Honorable Chair, we believe that there is a greater discourse to be had with the South African Zionist Federation, particularly to condemn Israel's crude destruction of human life. We also believe that a dialogue must be had with South African Union of Jewish Students and Benin Akiva, South Africa, we must foster a common understanding of human rights. Moreover, and most importantly, we call on a national boycott of the following brands. The Volvo Group, which allegedly supplies equipment used to bulldoze Palestinian homes. Protector and Gamble, which produces Pampas. Motorola, which is allegedly provides surveillance equipment sealed to round Palestinian segment. And McDonald's accused of unfairly discriminating against Arabic workers at their restaurants. Honorable Chair, we cannot allow apartheid Israel to hound the innocent people of Palestine. We therefore demand that the Israel embassy here in South Africa be downgraded with immediate effect. Our freedom is not complete without the freedom of the people of Palestine. I thank you. Thank you, Honorable Chapter. The Honorable Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. The horrible war between Hamas and Israel is full of such intense hatred between, between them that neither an end game nor any path to a lasting solution is in sight. I hate to say the word, at least, although we know that 1,400 Israelis and more than 10,000 people in Gaza have been killed. Many of these are women and children. War crimes have been committed on both sides. The deliberate and discriminate targeting of civilians on either side reflects depriving of the worst kind. Hamas fired thousands of rockets to Israeli towns and attacked and killed civilians, including children, women, and old people. It also kidnapped hundreds of people. The Israeli military has flattened big parts of Gaza with airstrikes, blocked deliveries of food, water, fuel, and electricity. The 56 years of military occupation of the West Bank and Gaza, 16 years of air, land, and sea blockade on the Gaza Strip, Israeli right-wingers 
willfully destroying Arab homes in the West Bank and causing continuous provocation at the Al Qasem Mosque. And Netanyahu in February 2023 signaling clearly that it was extremely unlikely that Israel and Palestinians will make any measurable progress towards a long term peace anytime soon provides the context to this war. While Hamas has has to be stopped, the humanization of Palestinians has also to be stopped. Right-wing Israeli Defense Minister Yuv Galant recently referred to the more than 2,000 million inhabitants of the Gaza Strip as, and I quote, human animals, when justifying a complete tightening of the siege on the Strip. While the world looks at, while the world looks to engage the parties for a solution where no viable solution is available, a ceasefire must occur and humanitarian issues must receive the highest priority. Further, military actions will solve nothing but aggravate the situation even more. The madness must stop. The United Nations must step up to the plate and must do so quickly. And I thank you. Thank you, Honorable Member. The Honorable Yonso, the PAC. The Honorable Hendricks. Uh, thank you very much, Honorable Chair. Honorable Chair, the resistance in Gaza will not stop. The Arab ambassadors in South Africa has come up with what they label a reasonable call. I must should release all the Israeli hostages on condition that Israel immediately causes the war in Gaza and withdraws from Gaza entirely. There is also a call that the resistance continue its firepower and used to ah and calling on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to support them to defeat Israel. Al Jamaa is torn between these two positions. But let me applaud the Ma Naledi Pando. Al Jamaa stands with you. And let me applaud President Ramaphosa, who wants the arms sales of South Africa to Israel to stop. Last year it was 30 billion rand. And the white rule led by honorable Stiernais and such calls will not be made in the South African Parliament in 2024. The DA has a hope to rule. Israel may not be a state. It is a people. Al Jamaa condemns the Zionist groups, uh, 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 especially the Jewish Board of Deputies, for heaping insults on the minister and for disparaging our office. This is treasonous behavior and the Minister of Justice must act. It is now time to enforce the legal provisions of the Foreign Military Assistance Act by prosecuting South African citizens taking part in the genocide in Gaza and serving in Israel's army of fascists, barbarians, and the worst of mankind. Also, to be prosecuted are those engaged in the alleged recruitment and development of South African citizens. Occupying powers do not have a right to defend themselves. Occupied people can shoot rockets. The Al-Aqsa flood has opened the eye of everyone globally that the real enemy of humanity is the triumvirate of the West, the USA's Biden, UK Sanak and Francis Macron. They've contributed arms to the Zionist state that has been responsible for endly, endless atrocities in the Palestinian areas. The Israel people are their puppets. Al Jamaa thanks Minister Lahiri Pando for unwavering support for Palestine freedom struggle and for the decision to recall South African diplomatic staff from Tel Aviv. Al Jamaa calls for an immediate unconditional ceasefire. Thank you very much, Honorable House Chair. Thank you very much, Honorable Hendricks. The Honorable Mahoma Pino. Uh, 
Thank you very much, uh, Chairperson. I also take this opportunity to greet the collective of honorable members, esteemed ears and eyes of the people of South Africa and elsewhere. I thought, Chairperson, that uh, we need to start by just doing a succinct characterization of the state of Israel. It is a consequence of war. It lives and survives on war. It's a settler, heartless, apartheid, immoral, genocidal, vampire state. The only political relevance of its Prime Minister Netanyahu is war. It perpetually quenches its thirst for war through the blood of the Palestinian people. Like a vampire, its primary prey is the people of Palestine. It respects no rules of international governance. It has no ear to listen to Israeli voices that say, not in our name. It has no brain to comprehend truth that no force can defeat a just cause of the people. The genesis of its stupendous superiority is parented by the UK and the US at all. It lacks the necessary political consciousness to realize the danger it poses to a correct proposal for the two states solution. It has no ear and emotions to listen to the painful voices of dying children of Palestine. It has no comprehension that perpetual genocidal maiming, suffocation, annihilation of Palestinians will be met with perpetual protracted just struggle by the Palestinians to liberate themselves. Let's just deal with some of the distortions. The war in Palestine did not start on the 7th of October 2023. And the subsequent propagandist tirade of the so-called right to self-defense by the state of Israel. We do not condone violence, but a question might be posed. What right of self-defense do you have when you arrive in a place of not your own, take what does not belong to you by force, and any inquiry or resistance to your immoral, illegal, insane act is met with declaration of death of innocent people. Among the many onslaughts that the Palestinian people had to face is in 1917, 1918, when the British used force to colonize Palestine under command of General Allen Bay. The British notoriety in 1820 was extended to South Africa upon their arrival here in Cape Town in Table Bay. By fire by force, State of Israel was declared in 1948, the same year when the National Party was formed and immediately started the apartheid system here in South Africa. As we speak, honorable members, Indications are that more than 10,000 Palestinian people have been killed in 30 days. More than 70% of these people who are maimed are women, the elderly, the disabled, the sick, and, chil and children. What is the sin of the Palestinians? The only sin is to say that they must have their land without occupation. The genocidal apartheid state of Israel expects the Palestinian people to allow them to annex more and more land, restrict their movement, suppress their human rights, rob and deny them of their dignity without any form of resistance. Because of time, I will not state the number of UN resolutions that the state of Israel has defied from 1947 to the recent history. They also defied the two agreements that were made in Oslo once they had participated in that particular process. Let's talk about uh, 
Our, our friends on the left here, honorable members, who are a collective of the moonshotists. <laughs> Your hypocrisy is exposed because I characterize you as political pendulumists. <laughs> Conveniently, you've forgotten that you call the ANC and its leader, President Nelson Mandela, a terrorist. You will not tell your friends in the apartheid state of Israel that today you will live side by side in relative peace with the people you call terrorists, monkeys, subhumans, people you maimed, killed, throttled, took their land, their animals, their being, and completely dehumanize us as black people. Stian Hayes, I want to challenge you and your friends, Honorable Stan Hayes, as much as you were populist and went to Ukraine, I challenge you to get into a flight and go to Gaza. <laughs> Tell your Prime Minister Netanyahu on how the ANC and other progressive formation liberated you, your ancestors, despite the fact that as blacks we are sub subjects of apartheid, colonial subjugation. Try and draw Prime Minister Netanyahu's attention to the reality and the truth that the collective apartheid onslaught of 342 years on black people in South Africa was resolved through peaceful negotiated settlement. Advise him that as a country, we rank among the best ex examples on political conflict resolution and working through the United Nations we stand by as South Africa to assist. Please tell him that we declared as the ANC in the Freedom Charter that all national groups shall have equal rights, and as we speak here today, all national groups have got equal rights. He might listen to you because you are birds of the same feathers. Today, Today, you seek to separate Nelson Mandela from the ANC, and you have not succeeded. Now, let me come to you, on, uh, honor, Honorable uh, Monsieur of the ACDP, and I want to quote Deuteronomy. It says, foreigners who live in your land will gradually gain more and more power, while you gradually lose yours. And this is what the apartheid state of Israel is doing to the Palestinian people. You will never comment and thank the people of Palestine and the ANC for advocating a two-state solution with Israel and Palestine living side by side in peace. You will never say this truth, you honorable members on the left. Some of you are offsprings and permanent beneficiaries of the apartheid colonial brutality whose consequence today is painfully reflected in a white minority of only 7%, controlling and owning more than 90% of South Africa's economy. You say you respect human rights, but you will not tell you, as backed Prime Minister Netanyahu, that it is inhumane and genocidal to announce on TV that you, on TV, that you will deny innocent people access to water, fuel, food, medication, free movement, prayer, you will destroy their hospitals, ambulances, schools, places of worship, and so on and so on. On way forward, we suggest that the United Nations-led immediate peace initiative must be implemented. Two, the UN must decisively act against the state of Israel. And as the minister has said, the ICC must charge Prime Minister Netanyahu. Three, the UN must enforce its own resolutions that have been defied by Israel. Four, we applaud the president for recalling the ambassador, but in addition, we'll suggest that the ambassador of Israel must go home until a negotiated process has been started in Gaza and Palestine. South Africans who are in the Israeli Defense Force must be brought back, named, and action must be taken against them. As Yasser Arafat said, and I quote, the victory march will continue until the Palestinian flag flies in Jerusalem and all Palestine.
Thank you very much, Honorable Mahoma Pelo. Yes, we. The Honorable the Minister of International Relations and Cooperation. Honorable Chairperson, I thank all members for participating in the debate that followed my statement, even those I disagree with. Honorable Chairperson, I was taught when I was very young that insults are the last refuge of a scoundrel. And so calling me a terrorist, friend of Hamas, etc., is like water off a duck's back because it's an absolute untruth and is a mere insult of a scoundrel who has run out of ideas. It has been clear in all our contributions that we support a two-state solution. This means we believe Israel has the right to exist as a state alongside a state of Palestine. This has been the long-standing view of the African National Congress before anyone expressed a view on Palestine, and so don't come here and attempt to claim any knowledge. The rights of Palestinian people are infringed on a daily basis. The Honorable Lekota was reported in a Jerusalem newspaper as saying there is no apartheid in Israel. People ride on buses together. He forgot to say that Palestinians are forced to live in small enclaves. They are not allowed to own their own property. Their land can be seized without any compensation, and they have to carry identity documents, go through a range of points where their identity is constantly checked. In some, they exist in an apartheid state. So, chairperson, attempts to cast aspersions will not cause us to fail to speak for the oppressed wherever they may be. The atrocities we've reported upon in this debate are real and they're acknowledged by millions. The fake news of baby beheadings have been tried by the greatest in world power and have been proven to be false social media reports. And for such to be reported in this house as though it is factual, is absolutely disgusting lies. The bombing of hospitals, which was denied, has been proven to be real. Honorable Minister, Thank you. please take your seat. There's a point of order requested. Thank you, Honorable Chairperson. Is the Honorable Minister prepared to take a question? You can take your seat, Honorable Minister. Honorable Dr. Melda. I've asked, is the Honorable Minister prepared to take a question? Honorable Minister, are you prepared to take a question from the yes, Honorable no, Member? Yeah, the Honorable Member can pose it. Allow. Did, did I hear you correctly saying that the atrocities that we are speaking about, the beheading of children, that those are fake news, that it's not true? Is that the position of the South African government? I want to ask you now. Thank you. No, it is evidence that has been provided by a range of non-governmental organizations, both in Israel and Palestine, because we don't only speak to Palestinians, we speak to peace-loving Israelis as well. And we know that there's a lot of fake news that attempts to cast Palestinians in a bad light. And it has been admitted, even from the White House spokesperson, that that statement that was made at the highest level was actually proven not to be factual. So, honorable member, I've responded to your question. And it's important, as I said, at the start of my contribution, that when we speak on these matters, let us speak being honest and factual. The facts are the people of Palestine are denied the right to exist as human beings. They are denied the right to enjoy the freedoms and the rights 
we so love as South Africans, the rights and freedoms we fought so hard for, the rights and freedoms we united on as a diverse South African people. Today, some of us in this house belong, be, believe these rights belong to some and not to others. That is not the South African way. We believe all human beings enjoy the right to exist in freedom, enjoying justice and humanity. And that is the message that has to come out of this house. This house cannot stand up for abuse, cannot stand up for the infringement of other human beings, no matter who those human beings are. We've never sought retribution. I have the story of my grandfather died of a broken heart. He was a tailor and he had worked very hard, his fingers down to the skin, to make enough money to buy a house in Durban. And they got that house, my grandfather and my grandmother. Two years after they got it, the area was declared a white area. They lost that house without compensation and he essentially died of a broken heart. I have no retribution because today I'm part of seeking to build a better South Africa. And our role must be to seek to build a better world. That that benefit we enjoy of human rights, of a fantastic constitution, of having institutions that are democratic and work for all of us, that privilege is not just for us. It must be for everyone. And in any debate we have, if we are true to ourselves, if we are true to our history, if we are true to what we've achieved, we will stand up and say what is being done to the people of Palestine is wrong, is intolerable, and we will not pretend to accept it. I thank you, Chairperson. Thank you very much, Honorable Minister. Honorable members, that concludes party responses to the statement. The secretary will read the first order.